มเรียบอนาชบาณกรุลกรุสซานุสซฮันเนตอนอคเนียดเมวิดีโอนี้ Hello everybody my name is Benedict I'll be your host for today and I am your co-host Pag and we are back from the summer so what better way to start off the school year with another episode of Asian Hope Podcast We are joined here with our guest Selena We are very lucky to have her back. She's an old student of ours. Can we tell? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Selena? Yep. So um, I studied in Asian Hope since kindergarten, and I graduated in 2022. And I am now studying um, elementary education in Grace College, Indiana, USA. And I'm in my. I just finished second year, so I'll be going in my third year. Okay. Wow. Okay. How are you feeling back here, back home? Um, it feels really great. I really miss my family and my friends, so it's been very nice to get together and to see them and spend time with them again. Yeah. I'd, I'd imagine. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Selena, as for me, I am a grade 11 student, and yep. for Pag, she's a senior, and she'll be leaving next year. So we're really interested about your journey from Asian Hope to universities, and we would like some information or some tips. About us and our future as well. Yeah, of course. I would really love to share what I know. I might not know everything, but whatever I know, I would love to share it. Just really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So to start off, could you tell us your journey from Asian Hope to Grace College um, in Indiana, USA, yeah. and why? What inspired you to go study abroad? Mm -hmm. So um, my journey from studying in AHS to studying at Grace College was nothing but full of miracles. Um, I was never the smart kid in class. I mean, I was smart, but like not not the smartest. And then I never was never like the outstanding one, you know, the one that shone in class or something like that. But um, I had a dream, and I was going to do everything in my power to achieve that dream. And even if I wasn't the smartest or the strongest. Um, I didn't give up, and I think that was what uh, pushed me into having the bravery to go abroad and study. And I think um, my biggest inspiration to pursue a further education was that um, I want to make I wanted to make a difference in this world. Um, it might sound cliche, but like you know, when people say they want to leave a mark here, so that's what I want to do. And I. Um, And I saw firsthand what little to no education can do to the people here in Cambodia, especially the children. So I want to help the underprivileged people and to um, pursue higher education, pursue better education, so that I can make education better in Cambodia. Yes, that's, that's amazing. That was really beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. So you mentioned that you were never the smartest in the class. Was that like a big struggle for when applying overseas? Um. I mean, I wasn't the smartest, but I think my grades did suffice the uh, average um, grades that the schools were looking for. So I'm not saying like if you if your grades are low, then you can get into college. No, but like you don't have to be the top, you know, to get into colleges. You can just try your best, just make sure your it. grades are up to level, and yeah, just make your GPA and school transcript very. Good. It doesn't have to be outstanding, but it just has to be good. Yes. Yeah. Like, you don't have to be the top number one. Yeah. You just have to really meet a standard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So if that wasn't a struggle, uh, what is the biggest challenge that you found when applying overseas? Um, I was really blessed to have a great admissions counselor because when you apply, the school will give you an admissions counselor that will help you every step of the way until you get on campus. So I didn't really have a lot of challenges. However, um, one of the challenges that can be met for other people when applying to colleges or universities in the U.S. is understanding um, the different requirements and deadlines of each schools. So. America takes deadlines and dates very seriously. So if you miss a day, it's not like, oh, I'm sorry. Like you make excuses and stuff like that. Like it's not, it's not for, like it's not their style. So you have to take deadlines very seriously. You have to keep track of all the documents, all the tests, essays, and your personal information and stuff like that. Um, and plus the financial aspect, like studying in the states, of course, can sometimes be very expensive. So you need to constantly look for scholarships and look for opportunities 
um, from the school, like how much money they can give you, um, how much money can you look for on the outside, because you can find scholarships in the school and scholarships outside the school as well. Okay. So, yeah. All right, so when arriving in America, were there any cultural and social adjustments that you find challenging when you were there? Yeah, um, I think as you can tell from the movies, American culture and Cambodia culture are two very different cultures. Yes. They yes. sometimes can be the polar opposite. So, I mean, it's not easy trying to fit in a culture where you have to be very outgoing, very loud. I mean, that's how I perceive Americans. But as an introvert, um, it's very hard to reach out to people first. And I remember um, during my first semester of school, I didn't have friends. Um, I, I mean, I had people that I talked to, but like, it's not the same level of friendship that I had here. Because here, I study with my friends like eight hours a day, five days a week. So of course, those friendships would form naturally. Um, but in America, you have to be the outgoing one. You have to be the one who starts conversations. And it's not like that for everybody. But I I mean, it's I guess it's a s kind of similar to here too, but like you have to go out of your comfort zone. You have to join um, school clubs and like join clubs where you know that there are people there that have similar interests um, like you do. So I think going out of your comfort zone is a very big thing when you want to study abroad. So I think that was one of the things that um, can be a big adjustment for people, especially from high school, because you spend a lot of time together in one class, but then you go and just, you know, have this pool of people where you have to get to know again. So, yeah. So it, it sounds like, I think, your first day of school again, but this time you're just an adult. Yeah. You're an adult. Yeah. And you're not, like, pushed into one class and, like, you have to get along because you're going to be in this class for 12 years, no, because your classes change every semester and every year, so there's always new people, so you can't be stuck with just a group of people the whole four years. Yeah. That must be tough. Yeah. 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 How, and how are you now? Do you have any um, uh, close friends? Yeah, because I joined school clubs, so oh. I there's this thing called intramurals, so college athletics are very competitive so I play volleyball, volleyball here but I don't think my skills are appropriate for there because they're very competitive so I joined um, there's this program called intramurals it's also sports but like less competitive so I joined the volleyball intramural there and so I met a lot of people and I also joined like the international students club so I met a lot of friends from different parts of the world and I also joined just little bits and pieces of events at school and I got to meet a lot of people so and I've made lifelong friends friends that I'm still connected to to this day well that's great that's yeah. great I'm happy to hear that okay so for me I'm uh thinking of applying abroad as well mm -hmm. um what would you get what advice would you give to other students like myself yeah um, um my advice is to just go for it look for opportunities and when there's one grab it don't hesitate because, you know, it never hurt to just apply and go for it. Like, what could you lose by doing yes. that? Mm -hmm. So um, if you're thinking about applying to schools abroad, just be ready to change. Some people might not like change. Can, change can sometimes be scary, but it is what makes you grow as a person. It's for your own personal growth. And we can't stay in our little bubble forever. So sooner or later, we're even if not college, the workplace. Mm -hmm. So we're never gonna be in high school forever. We're never gonna be in elementary school forever. So um, apply early. And like I said earlier, if your grades aren't great, work hard to improve them and build your resume because um, once you go into college, it's like a bridge for you to consider your future jobs. Mm -hmm. So you need to build your experiences, um, do volunteer work, take on leadership positions and because that's how you get scholarships because when you apply they'll look at your transcript they'll look at what you um what things were you involved in in school and how active you are in school 
um, and apply to lots of schools, not just one. Have backups, have multiple backups, and also do your research about the schools that you're applying to because you're not just going there to study, you're going there to live there, and you're starting, like, a new life. That's so true. So don't just research on the school, but, like, uh, do research on the town that you're going to be living in and, like, the surrounding states and cities and countries because you'll be starting a fresh new life there. So you're not going to just be confined to just the school, but like the community as well. So could you tell us like some of your experiences, what uh, extracurriculars that you did and what research did you do to go to Indiana? Yeah. So when I first um, heard from the school from my dad, yes. um, I did a lot of research. I I followed them on Instagram, Facebook, I looked them up on YouTube, on, you know, Google, and I read, um, there's this, every school has one, it's, um, it's called a student handbook, so in the student handbook, it tells you everything of what the school stands for, the rules, um, there's sometimes there's dress codes, curfews, and stuff like that, so it gives you kind of like an idea of what you're gonna get yourself into, so um, just to read a lot of um, articles and stuff about the school, watch videos, um, wa watch videos of like the town that the school is in, um, what kind of people live there. Because, I mean, you can find anything on the Internet these days. Yeah. So, yeah. And then find out what clubs they have. Um, maybe you're interested to join a uh, sport so you can look up what kind of sports do they provide and what scholarship comes with being an athlete at the school and stuff like that, yeah. You yeah. really have to stalk the school yeah. and the environment yeah. around yeah, it. Yeah, you have to go, go full on like detective mode, mm -hmm. yeah. But that's like reasonable if, from what you said. Yeah. And do, do you think that sometimes when you do research, uh, a lot of questioning comes to play when like, okay, I wanna go to this university mm -hmm. and like, ex for example, for me, I want to go to New York, mm -hmm. but then case scenario, the school I go to accepts me, but the living space and the living situation goes hard yeah. and scholarships. My, let's say other people got the scholarship and I didn't. Mm -hmm. So would that like, would your choices differ to other places? Yeah. If the living situation and like, would uh, the living situation is different? Mm -hmm. So I think that when you, like I said earlier, you have to apply to a lot. That way you have options. So in case like what you, how you mentioned, like if you want to go to New York and then you got accepted, but then the living situations and stuff like that is going to be hard for you. That's when um, you contact your admissions counselor. Um, it's very good to have a good c communication with them. And so you can ask him or her questions like what you have and then they can give you options but at the same time if you think that um that opportunity does not fit for you at the moment i think it's a very good idea to go to plan b because um just like just arrive there get on campus because it's easier to transfer once you've been accepted into a school and then you study there for a year or for, for a semester and then you want to transfer that way you can get it's more easier because you've are, you're already there in the U.S. So um, just like apply for something and choose something that is convenient and easy for you. And, um, you know, financial aid and stuff, um, you can always ask for help later on. But yeah. to just focus on getting there first and whatever, you know, interests you just um, I mean, sometimes it's OK to settle for less so that you can go there, be there, and then you can look for more. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And yeah. I'm sure it'll help a lot of people who yeah. are in between mm -hmm. options. So you've been there for two years now yeah. in college. Uh, how has those two years affected you personally, um, academically, um, stuff like that? Yeah. Um, like I said earlier, my journey so far has been full of miracles. Like never in my life have I ever thought that I could study in the States. Um, but I think that prayer has been such a big part in my life. Like looking back, all I see are answered prayers. And I think that through the challenges that I faced, um, I faced them with faith and knowing that I will get through it. 
and I worry less and put my trust in God. So um, it's not like when something happens, I just brush it off and think that God will handle it. No, but like when something does happen, I face it with um, faith that I will get through it and I just have to try my best and God will do the rest. And um, yes, yeah, and knowing amen. that has made my life so much lighter and more full of joy, even in my darkest moments. Because, you know, sometimes um, people might wonder, like, I'm always so happy all the time. It's not like I care anything about anything. But, I mean, I do have my worries and my hardships, but it's my attitude towards it that um, changes the perspective and the situation, and that attitude comes from trusting in the Lord. So a lot yeah. of faith plays into this as well. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't think I would get here just because of my family and myself. It's all because of the Lord. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, have you been able to maintain relationships with uh, family and friends back home while you are so far away? Mm -hmm. So I do call home regularly. Um yeah, it's very hard not to because I've lived with them all my life. So it's not like I can just cut off the connection when I'm there. So during the first few months, of course, it can be overwhelming and stuff like that. But keeping in touch with family um, gives you a sense of normalcy in the midst of all the chaos and changes that are happening. And I think that it's very important to like stick to your roots and remember where you came from and to just be humble. Did did yeah. you ever have moments while like you were in Cambodia where you're like, I can't wait to go to college, I can't wait to be on myself. But then when you were in college, you're like, oh, shucks, I really miss my family. Yeah, because I had the exact same like um, feeling because funny story, I promised myself that I would not come back here, that I would stay there for like the whole four years and then I would come back. But then after the first year, I was like dying to come back. I was like... I need to come back like soon. So I, I came here on my second year. So that's what college does to you. You think like before you go, you're like all excited and you're ready for independence and stuff like that. But inevitably you will miss your family. You miss home, things that you're used to, the food especially. Oh yes, um, yeah. I imagine, yeah. Yeah, because when you're here, you're eating the same thing, you're meeting the same people, so you don't value it as much. But yes. once you go out and you don't have those routine, those um, familiar faces, like you long for it. Like you really it, miss it. It will yeah. definitely show the values of all those yeah, things when yeah. you don't have it anymore. Yeah, and you learn how to appreciate the little things in life and stuff like that. Yeah. So would you suggest that while we're still here with our families and with our friends and with our home to cherish it yeah. as much as we can? Yeah, so don't take those moments for granted because... Um, yeah, because when you're too excited to go out, that's all you can think about. I mean, I'm talking from experience. I'm like counting down the days till I leave. So, wow. but then I can't get those days back. Like those days yeah. are long gone. So, um, while you're still here, I mean, you can be excited, but also to live in the moment, be present. Don't just think about the future or think about the past. Like the future is going to come anyways, like no matter if you think about it or not think about it. So what you can do now is to just live in the moment and um, appreciate what you have, appreciate yes. the people that are around you, appreciate the love and support that you have. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, speaking about support, I would also um, want to ask you, were there any uh, support systems or resources that were helpful uh, for your transition mm -hmm. from Asian Hope to college? Oh, from Asian Hope to Grace University? Yeah. yeah. So um, during my transition from high school to university in the U.S., um, finding a supportive group of friends was a very big thing that helped me because, you know, um, we're, I mean, anywhere we go, we're bound to be, to have friends, to be in a group of people where they're like your support system. So it matters who you befriend. So like if you befriend people who bring you down or like give you bad advices, that's the path that you're gonna go. But finding people who encourages you to work hard, encourages you to make um, positive 
choices and stuff like that is a very good um, support system for me because most of my friends are there. They do well in school. They don't go out and party. Mm -hmm. um, they, you know, give me good advice, give me advice that is good for me and not advice that will like, you know, tear me down in the future. And um, yeah, they help me to stay true to myself because it's very hard to stray away from your morals when you're away from family. So I think that having good friends is a very um, good thing when you're transitioning between high school and college. And at Grace College, there's a program called Student Mentoring. So it's where an upperclassman takes on a group of freshmen and guides them all throughout their freshman year. So um, that program helped me a lot because there was an upperclassman that I could rely on. So that's one of the resources that the school gave. And so um, that program helped me a lot. So when I went in my second year, um, I also did student mentoring. So I was one of the student mentors. So I had a group of freshmen who I helped them um, with their transitioning from high school to college. And I think that also joining a club uh, international students club where you get to socialize and meet people who are in similar situation so you can like empathize with each other and talk about like the uh, similar things that you guys all went through so I think just finding the right people um, and stuff like that and also use resources like google calendar and email like staying organized is also key so um, read your emails a lot um, plan your events, your activities in Google Calendar. And yeah, it will keep you on top of things. It will keep you organized. And when you apply for jobs or internships, they'll see how organized you are. And that makes you like more unique from other um, applicants as well. So to just poise yourself to be a very um, organized, neat, and responsible person. And yeah, and there's also academic advising and tutors um, on campus. I, I don't know about every campus, but like I know most campus have to free tutoring and free academic advising. Um, so yeah, so they can help you plan um, your classes and also help you with homework that are sometimes challenging as well. Yeah, I see. This is. You make you make it sound very easy, but yeah. <laughs> the reality of it is it hard or yeah, normal? It's not easy. Like the things that I'm saying, that I'm telling you right now, is because I went through it. So I didn't know. Nobody, like, so as I mentioned earlier, our class just got out of COVID. So there wasn't anything like you guys have now. You guys have like counselors who yes. help you yeah. with college and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes. So. When I was still in Asian Hope, we didn't have that yet. So I didn't really understand the concept of college. So I just went there with what I know from researching from the websites and stuff like that. Um, so the things that I'm telling you is what I learned from, sometimes I learn from my mistakes, sometimes I learn from other people. So I think, yeah, it's never easy to go out there by yourself and to like, experience this but if you do your research well and like you ask people that have those experiences yeah. and um yeah i mean it's a good thing we're doing this now because it might give you a better um view yeah. of what you're getting yourself into and stuff like that yeah is there any aspect of college that's not really talked about much yeah um, that you experience firsthand that people don't really talk about um, um in the media or anything I think what's not talked about enough is um, the, I, yeah, I'm not sure because here, I mean, you have a natural relationship with your teachers, mm -hmm. but there, um, sometimes you can be in a class of like 300 people Whoa. or 400 oh, yeah. people. Mm -hmm. So if the teacher doesn't know you, it kind of is like a wall because sometimes I know some people tell me, like, if you have good relationships with your professor, you get better grades. And then so I think that having not very many people talk about this, but like having a good relationship with your professor does affect your grade, because if they don't know you, I mean, their grading could be a little ruthless. But like if you go into their office 
um, in their office hours and just ask them about your homework mm -hmm. and just have like create small talk with them. You know, yeah. professors love to talk. That's why they teach. Yes. Yeah. So if you just ask them about their family, how they're doing and stuff like that, just drop in their office like maybe once a week or something like that just to create that friendship. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, that will make your school life more easier. Okay. Yeah. And talking about school life, I also know that you are a scholarship student mm -hmm. and you are working in the school for some uh, funding for your living situation. Mm -hmm. Could you explain, tell us more about that and also the financial management side yeah. of living in college? Yeah. So um, I applied for scholarships and worked on campus to help my studies and my expenses and stuff. So um, the I've like when you first apply, they're gonna give you like scholarship options. Like what do you, what scholarship do you want? So you um, you apply for those, and then when you apply, they're gonna ask for your um, GPA and your high school transcript. So they're gonna look from they're gonna look at your transcript from ninth grade to twelfth grade. So mm, three grades. Yes. Oh, okay. So and then your overall GPA. So if you have if your GPA is higher, you get more scholarships. And if your GPA is lower, then you get the amount of scholarship that fits your GPA. Okay. So it's very nice to have like a high GPA so you can get more scholarships. And as for working um, on campus, um, as an international student, it's illegal to work off campus. Yeah. So, but, it's, um, but you can work on campus. It doesn't okay. pay much. But, you know, it gets you through. And yes. jobs on campus are very easy. Like, one, I have, I'm currently work. well, not currently, but, like, when I was in my second year, I had three jobs. So I did office work. I did the student mentoring. You get paid for that as well. Mm -hmm. And I worked in um, a, one of the school club, the International Students Club. So those jobs are doesn't require you to do much. So like, for example, my office work during quiet hours, I can just sit there and do my homework and then get paid. Oh. So you can take on a lot of positions. Easy um, like a good deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even if it doesn't pay much, it's good for experience. Yes. And it's also, you know, you have time to sit down, do your homework while also getting paid. So I think that's a win-win situation. And yeah, and you get to have relationships with a lot of people because working working in the office, you get to see a lot of people that goes in and out. And then working in the International Student Club, you get to meet a lot of international students. Mm -hmm. And student mentoring, you get to meet a lot of freshmen and stuff like that. So it's a good networking system that you can like meet people, have job experience, and getting pay and get paid. Okay. Yeah. So you live on campus. Do you have roommates or? Um, so I don't live on campus. Oh, okay. So that's similar to what you mentioned, um, where you get accepted, but yes. like the cost of living is very high. Yeah. So um, I got accepted, but the cost of living is very high. So my parents were looking for a host family. Oh. So my dad, through a friend, um, there was um, a grandma from church that my dad's friend goes to and she was willing to host me for my whole four years. So I get to live with her for free, which is a very big blessing. So that just lifts off, you know, another burden off my shoulders of paying for um, room and boarding and stuff like that. So I cook my own food because meals on school is very expensive. So, but like grocery shopping in America is fairly cheap. So if you know how to cook, you can cook for yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just one person. So you're not going to spend that much on food unless you eat out. But yeah, so just have connections with people. So there's also host families that you can find on the internet that they're willing to host, but be careful because you don't yeah. know them and you're yeah. going to go live with them. So you need to do your research well on that. Well, but more, yeah. more stalking. Yeah, <laughs> more but, stalking, yeah, yeah. but host families are an option yes. if... Mm -hmm. um, you're looking to um, for, for like a living space near the school or somewhere around the school. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Okay, so uh, when a student leaves Asian mm -hmm. Hope, as I'm about to next year, yeah, uh, what are some of the key skills and knowledge and characteristics that we should have um, to guide us mm -hmm. uh, forward? Yeah, 
Um, I think I mentioned some of this in my alumni post thing. I'm sure you've been seeing those on Facebook. Yes. Um, but I think that my advice is to just trust in your ability ability to communicate clearly because in some schools, you know, when they go abroad, language barrier is a very big thing, but yeah. I'm sure it's not a big thing for you guys here because yes. you guys be okay. are bilingual. Yeah. And so um, don't be afraid to speak up and showcase your ability to speak because when you go abroad and they see you as like, you know, as Asians, like, oh, they might not speak good English. They might not, you know, have like a mindset of like coming abroad and stuff like that. But yeah. um, you have to be confident and show them that you are smart. That's why you got there in the first place. Mm -hmm. And to be brave, but to also be respectful and kind because not all people are open minded. Like mm -hmm. some of the people at my school in America, some of them never even left the US. Like some of them never even left Indiana. So mm -hmm. their mindset and their thinking might yeah, not be as like very knowledgeable. Yeah, yeah, very limited. So to just be patient be respectful, um, grab opportunities as they come and stay open to new experiences. Mm -hmm. And and also like use the strong work ethic that you've learned here in Asian Hope to use there. Because here in Asian Hope, you know, they teach you how to be responsible yes. of your yeah. time, of your work. Um, they teach you to be kind to others, to be honest, have integrity and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that you will need to use when you go live by when you go to live by yourself because when you go out there there's no one to nag on you there's no yeah. one to remind you of these things so it's very important that um you have your morals you mm -hmm. stand your ground and also to build a network of friends and family who can support you um from or family family or friends from afar or close and also keep your time and finances um in check to stay organized and yeah so if you focus on those areas i think that you'll be well prepared to handle anything that you will face yeah yeah so colleges so college really does push you not to be an introvert <laughs> yeah it really yeah. does i mean i'm not saying like introvert is like a bad thing i am one <laughs> but like it's okay to get out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Like, don't just let the word introvert limit you to just being an introvert. Like, yeah. sometimes you can be an introvert, but you have to go out there mm -hmm. and do networking and meet with people because the world moves very fast. And if you're not running as at the same pace as the world does, then, like, you'll fall behind. It so, won't catch up to you. Yeah. yeah, so you have to grab things. When you see it, just grab them because you're not gonna lose anything by grabbing opportunities. Yes. Like if there's a job coming, you might hesitate like, oh, I don't think I'm fit for that job or I don't think my skills are up to par, but how would you know that if you don't try? So yeah. I think that stepping out of your bubble, out of your comfort zone is a really great way to, for you to have personal growth and for you to have experience mm -hmm. so that you can use those experiences and share it to the younger generations as well. Yeah. Um, could I ask, what do you see yourself after college? Mm -hmm. So as of right now, um, I'm not too sure, but I'm planning to work with um, nonprofit organizations. So hoping to work somewhere like maybe United Nations or wow. um, UNESCO and like World Vision or World Relief and organize organizations like that because it's been a lifelong dream of mine to help children, to help people who are not as privileged as I am and to, you know, make Cambodia known on the global scale and to show the world that, you know, Cambodia is a country too. And to help people who doesn't have the same opportunities like I did, to help them have the same opportunities so that they grow up well equipped with knowledge that could give them a good future. Yeah. With the integrity that you have, I'm, I'm sure you will get there. Thank you. Soon. Yeah. yeah. I, hope, I hope you do. Mm -hmm. And I hope you guys 
all the best for your college journeys as well. Thank yes, you so thank much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. But the advice that you've given us, we'll have a lot to think about and a lot mm-hmm. to put in action. Mm-hmm. So and thank you. A yeah. lot of stalking to do. And a lot of yeah. Stalking. yeah. Yeah. Use the internet. Like it's there for you to yes. use. Yeah. So. On our yeah. phones, on our laptops. Yeah. We need everywhere. to utilize it much more yeah. than we do now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And schools, colleges, they do a lot of marketing. So they put a lot of themselves out there so it's not like so it's not like you're not gonna find anything you're gonna find everything yeah (laughs) yeah okay yeah um i think i'm curious i think other students are curious but yeah how fun is college um college is very fun like i said um independence sometimes can be overwhelming but when you use it the right way, mm. you have a lot of freedom. Yes. And mm. so like like here, for example, you want to go out with your friends. You have to ask mom, can I go? Yeah. Oh, can I have yes. some money <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that? Yeah. But once you're out there, it, it was very weird for me at first because I had strict parents. So going out there, when my friends would ask like, hey, do you want to go to this place? And then I would be like, Sure. Like I made the decision for myself. I didn't have to ask anybody. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the fun aspect of it, but don't have too much fun. But it's very fun because there's always events on campus. There's like school fairs, carnivals and like in America or like any other country abroad, they have more opportunities like for young people to be engaged in. Mm -hmm. So like volunteer work can sometimes also be fun. Camp is also fun and stuff like that. So, yeah. And um, going abroad, they have, like, bigger spaces because, of course, they're a bigger country. Mm -hmm. So you can have, like, picnics and, like, you go to the lake and, like, go fishing or something. So, yeah, you have a lot more resources for you. And, yeah, it's really fun. Sometimes stressful, but, yeah. Yeah. It's how you make of the situation in the moment. Yeah. 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 You make... That's uh, things to keep in mind mm-hmm. yeah. when I'm thinking co- going to college. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, Selena, thank you very much. Thank you guys for having me. Yes. Thank you for coming. It's been yeah. a, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. You've yeah. definitely enlightened us mm-hmm. to consider other aspects mm-hmm. of going into college, and mm-hmm. yeah. uh, we are grateful to learn yeah. more about college. And yeah. Mm-hmm. For someone that went there. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's. I think that's the end of our episode today. Thank you guys for watching. And if you are interested, please stay tuned because there will be more. Thank you guys. See you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.